Hi, welcome to module four of lecture eight. In the previous module, we covered probability mass functions, which tell you the probability of any particular realization of a random variable being drawn, of drawing any particular value of a random variable, of a discrete random variable. Now we're going to talk about the cumulative distribution function. So the cumulative distribution function. And incidentally, I have not the slightest clue why it's a cumulative distribution function instead of a cumulative mass function for discrete distributions, but it appears to be the case. So this would be the same word for both continuous and discrete distributions. And it's often called by shorthand the CDF. The CDF um, function, the CDF rather, is a function that tells you not the chance of being at a particular value, but rather the chance of being less than or equal to a particular value. So for instance, um, the probability of having a particular value uh, set of, the, of the random variable rather being less than or equal to y is equal to the, CD, is the CDF of the, of the distribution. So CDF here is that probability. Now for discrete distributions, it's pretty straightforward. Actually, it's pretty similar for the continuous as well. If you want to know the chance of having the random variable draw any one of the values less than or equal to some value y, all we need to do is add up all the chances of, of being at values less than or equal to y. So for instance, if we had three possible things happening, right? if we had values 1, 2, or 3, and the chances were um, one third, one half, and one sixth. Well, the chance of being less than or equal to one is one third. The chance of being less than or equal to two is equal to the chance of drawing one or two, which since they're mutually exclusive, is just the sum of these probabilities, which is one third plus one half, which is five sixth. So the chance of being less than or equal to two is five sixth. The chance of being less than or equal to 3 is 5 sixth plus 1 sixth, or 1, which makes sense since it can only be 1, 2, or 3. And there, therefore, um, you must be, since you must draw some value, the chance of being less than or equal to the maximum is equal to 1. That's true in general. The CDF starts at 0 and adds probabilities until you hit the end of the support, which is 1. So all you're doing here is adding up the probabilities of each individual y um, for some y given all, say, x that are less than or equal to y. Um, there's different ways of writing this because it's discrete and you're actually looking at index values. Um, this actually brings up an important point in that the CDF makes sense for discrete random variables as long as there's some actual natural order for the for the um, random variable. So in order, in order, most, it makes most sense for um, ordinal or obviously interval ratio variables. It makes much less sense for nominal variables because what are you really adding up? You can still do it, mind you. So if your distribution involved, say, the number of people who lived west, east, and north, you could decide the number of people who, you could put that in that order and say the number of people who lived less than or equal to east was you know, two thirds, the frequency was two thirds. But that's kind of odd, right? Why would you be doing that? What does less than equal to east mean, right? This we discussed this way back in the, in the um, uh, first part of the, in the course. When we talk about nominal versus ordinal variables, um, nominal ordinal level of measurement, you tend to want to use CDFs for ordinal um, or higher level um, interval ratio type vari variables, not so much for nominal variables. When you do this, and if you index the different categories, then you can also write this um, for some particular value yj as the sum of all i is less than or equal to j. So if j is 3, then you, then you add, um, say, 1, 2, and 3, y1, y2, and y3 to get that probability. Um, if this is the probability that y is less than or equal to yj for some j. Okay, so this is the CDF. The CDF, again, goes from 0 to 1. You often see it. So for instance, for this example over here, 
if this is category one and this is category two and category three, the histogram of this thing would have a one half height at two and a one third height at one and a one sixth height at three. But the CDF starts off at one third, goes to five sixth, and then to one up here. One, five sixth, and a one third. So basically it always goes from zero to one. The CDF is really closely tied to statistics um, because um, what we often want to know is what the chance is that our particular sample mean is greater, sufficiently greater than the theoretical mean, so it has to be statistically significantly different, statistically, statistically significantly different. Um, so what we want to know is, and we, so if we put a cutoff for what the cutoff for being close enough to be not different is, usually it's, it's um, two times standard deviation, um, and if it's greater than that, then it's different. Well, what's greater than that? Well, if this is your CDF function, and we know that being greater than that, that the chance of being less than the maximum is one, we can invert this thing to find that the chance, the chance of being greater than some value has to be one minus the chance of being less than or equal to some value because you must be somewhere. The chance of being less than it plus the chance of being greater than it has to be one. So we can get the chance of being greater than that as one minus the chance of being less than that. So we typically set it up so the chance of being greater than that cutoff value, if it's say a two-tailed test, is say 2.5% approximately. Um, so that helps us set up um, inference. So these CDFs are, are, are relevant, very much relevant for statistical inference, and that's where they come up most often. Um, but again, you see them most often for ordinal and integral ratio variables, for instance, if you were doing some categorical some categorical variable was in your data about education levels, typically you'll see, um, you know, no high school, some high school, high school, some college, college, um, some graduate or graduate degree, and maybe if it's a really depth one, there'll be, be postgraduate education, um, I mean post postgraduate education. So, um, so. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Anyway, these would be categories, and so they have a natural order. You could then take a CDF across this and say, okay, you know, what's the chance in my data of a particular individual in the sample being let being having education less than or equal to college, or so on. Um, these are all the kind of things you can do with CDFs, and they again tie very closely to statistical inference. Um, so that's it for the the, the basic stuff. Um, for basically what is a distribution. Um, the next couple of modules, we're going to talk about specific distributions that come up a lot in statistical work. Thank you very much.